Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher and today we're going to take a look at the tangle Gertie from Ken Stewart. Now this one has a little bit of a special place in my heart. It's one of the first tangles that I found uh, after I had learned about Zentangle uh, and was just playing around and uh, yeah so it has a little special place in my heart. So this is an interesting tangle, and I put it in the category, I created one called industrial, because this kind of looks industrial to me. It looks like, um, I don't know, well, because it's called Gertie, and it looks like, you know, a girder in, in a building and stuff like that. So uh, that's what I was thinking. All right, this one starts with, you know, a curved line of some, however you want to curve it. I kind of just did a, an arc, but you can, you know, um, do however. Then... Um, we're going to aura that, and so you can aura it either direction. I think I'm going to aura it this direction, like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to create, as you saw in the um, the intro photo, uh, this is going to kind of become a platform in the end look of it. So what we want to have is sets, uh, pairs of, uh, of lines like this that are sort of close together, but then separated by a larger area. So what I mean by that is just this. So I'm going to I'm going to create two more lines but I'm going to separate it by a little bit greater distance like so. Like that. So if that makes any sense. All right, I'm going to put a little one up there cuz that's about where it would be. All right. Now. Next, we're going to we're going to do some straight lines. And we're going to utilize the halibau technique, but it's a little bit different. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to start by doing one sort of up the center. So I'm doing, starting at the base, coming up to this line, not crossing it, but I'm going to go about midway, put my pen down and continue. So just like you would be doing halibau, it's just that we're not, um, we're not completely drawing underneath this line this this set of lines we're drawing we're drawing through them uh, there we go all right and i think i'll i'll make that one go like that all right then similar to halibau we can we're going to or it and so these can be as as wide as you want again that's up to you wah and <laughs> you know you get you get to decide that all right, so once you have one, then I'm going to kind of go off on angles here because I'm, this is kind of like uh, if you were maybe looking, looking down so that way you have, you know, wider apart and then um, uh, narrower down here at the, at the base, kind of a graduated look. All right. And then if I was going to do another one, I suppose it would probably be starting maybe here. You know, and these, of course, just like everything, you can do them however, you know, whatever direction you want them to go. All right, and I'm going to, I'm, oh, that's going to be really difficult now. Never mind. I was going to turn my tile so it would be a little easier, but I think that it would just be confusing because I want to make sure, oops, that didn't go quite up. Um that I'm stopping at the right place and starting at the right place. All right, so we're going to make another one kind of going this direction. And I every time I get to a line, I'm hesitating. And they don't have to be even, although this one I could or it this way. That's what's kind of nice when you just, you, of course, because you just do one. It's like, well, I can, you know, and I think I will do that. Just, eh. I, and I'm just going to turn this because it's bugging me. I feel the need. I want to see what I'm doing. And I always like to, I said, I'm going to order this this direction. We'll leave that big gap in there just because. And let's see. Then we'll have one coming like right here and up. And then there. Kind of doing a backwards sort of hollow bow. Yeah. So again, however you see fit to have them, um, you can do that. All right, next step is we're going to fill these in. And let's see, I might as well, I could start here at the base. And so I switched to the graphic one, and I'm going to be very careful. Um, a lot of times I'll do, 
kind of the outline first so that way I don't uh, get all crazy and accidentally, you know, if I'm moving too fast or something and, you know, have a little, a little extra line somewhere. And even like right here, so like I'm, I'm going to top or top that, I'm going to, well, cap that off there at the bottom. And I'm just being careful. Now this is the opportunity because I had a couple places that were a little, went a little wonky. And so this is your opportunity to course correct because we have no mistakes in Zentangle, right? But as long as you're going out, it's like this, well, it doesn't look, that one doesn't look too bad. Uh, say two, if, um, because like a lot of times mine have ended up maybe not being as even as I wanted, you know, so like thinner down here and thicker up here, then you can adjust that as well. Although I'm thinking if you're looking for that gradient, they might be thicker out at the top and thinner at the bottom. But that's just something that you can play with. All right, and I can't remember if there was something. Oh, if there was something else that I was going to mention because otherwise I will hit pause here. Um, one thing is if you want to use color, something to think about is. Um, since we we're drawing, we're, will we be filling in over a line? You just want to take that into consideration. So if you decide to use some color, um, you just want to make sure to have something that will cover whatever that is. So that way um, we get this illusion, as you can kind of see happening already, is that these are becoming a, like a platform and we've drawn these um, girders through them and it's kind of neat. All right, so let me push pause and I will finish coloring this in and I'll be right back with you. All right, so there we go. Now, next step is, oh, there's my, <laughs> where did my oh, one go? The next step is we're going to just draw some straight lines and let me start, I'll start here in the middle. And again, they're, so they're just straight lines, and I'm essentially auraing uh, this right here. But we are going, so we're we're in this middle section, but we are going from this line to this line, not crossing over, not not anything. So this helps with that illusion of that we have drawn through something, like so. And let's see, I'll get this now. The thing to be beware of, as I'm trying to be very careful of because this is kind of wet and I'm putting my fingers on, I'm trying to use actually my nails because um, I don't want to smudge any of the ink anywhere. Okay. Now, one thing that you might have to do is if, if, you know, depending on how your curves are is you might have to adjust these straight lines or sort of straight lines. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing because that's not helping at all. Um, well, like right here, for instance, so it, we're wider at the top and narrower at the bottom here. Oh, that's a little, fix that up right there. All right, so what you might have to do is just adjust a little bit. Now, I'll say, I don't think I've used some musical references before, but uh, so if you didn't know, I was, you know, band geek in high school. And in marching band, this is what, is this, it may, makes me think of marching band is what it does. So we march in a parade. And when you're going around a corner, you want it, you have to you you have to keep your lines straight. So when you go around a corner, the people on the inside of the curve have to take small steps, and then the ones on the outside have to take really large steps. So that way you're maintaining your line, but going around the corner. And it was you know it always seemed like the shortest people were on the you know the wrong side and having to really take. A, huge leaps but again so this doing this makes me think of that because as you're kind of going around we want to keep the straight lines so if you just adjust gradually so like see they're narrower at the they're more together at the bottom and more separate at the top and that helps so you see and just going slowly because I, I think it's neat to keep try to keep the illusion you know, of that, you know, these are just absolutely straight lines. Now, I've not tried to, I mean, this, this is what he has in the step outs. I, you know, I'm, 
you know, and it kind of does go with it. But at the same time, I'm thinking there could be, oops, let me get in the camera there. Um, there could be some other things that you use, other textures besides, you know, the straight lines. Um, maybe sometime I'll have to give it a go with, um, with orbs or something like that with some tipple behind there. That could be kind of, that could be interesting. Could make it and it would look like, um, uh, like a stone wall or something. These ones are getting a little too far apart. Flip my tile so that way, because I'm, I'm keep pulling it towards me and that's what's not helping yeah so always turn your towel feel free to you know if it starts something starts feeling uncomfortable or you know things are going awry just kind of do a little check and think am I, am I comfortable or am I stretching and that way then you can just adjust your tile and have it all better all right I think I can get this other section done without making a pause here oops can't so, so luckily I have I have some nails so that way I'm holding it with my nails and not my fingertips well, let's see I don't have one there okay we gotta just do this little edge here and then the base and I don't know why I'm calling it the base I guess because it's the base that's just funny and these are kind of just right off the And sometimes you're just drawing straight lines. It's like, yeah, well, we're just going to crisscross there and it'll be all, it'll be all fine. All right. And there we go. Isn't that neat looking? And like I said, I put this in um, what I call the industrial um, category because that's what it looks like. There's another one. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to dig it out, make sure I have a step out or, or make one and, um, and, uh, and do it. All right. So, you know, what? I'm going to leave this one as it is because I did do another one. Because I don't remember, I don't believe that Ken had anything on his about shading. But, you know, so you can see it looks cool as it is. And it has kind of a, you know, 3D effect. Just like that. But if you wanted to add some shading, this egg shot, because I also kind of like to see things next to each other. <laughs> no shading, shading, no shading, shading. This one I did, and you can see it, it really accentuates um this platform so what i did was i put some heavy graphite along this side probably could even go a little darker i didn't want to have it come down too far and um so i did that on these on the um on this side of the platform and then on the upper side i also put a little bit of graphite but just not as much and then for this one i didn't spread it out too far going this way I just kind of did what I call um you know I was just pushing the graphite this way which which spreads it out a little bit but just not a whole lot versus like here I was doing circles because I wanted to pull it down a little bit to pretend like it's casting a shadow See, normally in Zentangle we don't worry about um light source and all of that kind of stuff but you know I mean if you can if you can see oh hey if I if I do this it'll make that look like a ledge then of course we can do that there's there's not any reason. I usually mention it just because, um, just so that way you don't get stressed out about it. Because um, I know for me, being a, a non-artist, it's kind of like, oh, I have to learn all this stuff. Oh, you know, and I, and I continually will put uh, stumbling blocks in front of myself, and that would be one of them. So that's why I mention it. Just, you know, so that way, if you're worried about it, don't worry about it. But if you say, oh, hey, that would be really cool, then of course. So there you go, um, Gertie. And if you enjoyed this video, would love to have a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed yet, if you like it enough that you might want to see some more, feel free to subscribe. And then if you do, hit the notification bell next to it. So that way you can decide if you want to receive notifications or not and how you want to receive them. Um, in the description section, I will have a link to this step out and, um, and anything else that I can find. I do have... Um, uh, also links to connect with me if you want and if uh, I say this I'm, I am posting daily because we have a, kind of a daily well we have a daily ta tangle it's not necessarily a challenge because people can kind of jump jump on and jump off as they as they see fit but um, uh, so I am posting these little quickie videos daily I'm gonna do it until we run out of tangles 
Um, or until, yeah, until we run into tangles. Um, so anyway, so that way you know, you'll see something every day, unless, you know, something bad happens, and so we'll knock on wood that uh, everything will always be great. So with that, again, I hope you enjoyed it, and I wish you happy tangling.